is not a Gibson double cut Les Paul, nor is it some kind of PRS. This is actually a Hamer guitar with the somewhat confusing name of Sunburst. Sunburst was the model name, but they came in finishes other than Sunburst, as this one clearly demonstrates. I believe this color was called Salmon Blush. It uh, matches my new glasses pretty well, and the quilt top on it is very, very impressive. This particular example is from the early 90s. I've had this guitar for probably 14 or 15 years now. I bought it sight unseen on eBay, uh, based on the other Hamer guitars that I still own. And basically, Hamer were eating Gibson's lunch from about the early 70s. So Paul Hamer and Joel Danzig were fans of the classic Gibson guitars from the 50s, kind of around the time they were becoming known as classics. So you had, you know, Clapton with John Miles Blues Breakers using an old Les Paul. You had Jimmy Page strutting around the world with a Gibson Les Paul 58 and a 59 kind of as his main guitars. And loads of other players were lusting over these 50s Les Pauls well before they achieved the absolutely astronomical prices. And basically, you know, Hamer and Danzig, they started building guitars to, I guess, mimic the aesthetic and the vibe of those 50s Gibsons kind of most famously by taking the Explorer shape, which had not been a very successful guitar, but assigning Les Paul Burst aesthetics to it. So, you know, you have this kind of Explorer with a flame maple top and a Burst, and those guitars are now worth a lot of money. Very, very desirable. Most people probably associate them with Rick Nielsen from Cheap Trick, but loads of Hamer users over the years, including Steve Stevens, uh, Glenn Tipton from Judas Priest, come to mind. This particular guitar though, I was watching a video uh, by John Cordy, and if you're not subscribed to John Cordy's channel, absolutely amazing guitar player, so much great content out there, and an absolute geezer as well, so go and send John some love. But uh, John just got a red Les Paul DC from the 90s, and he was kind of talking about how Gibson were uh, more or less taking the PRS route with it. I watched it, and I was kind of sitting here going, they were taking the Hamer out on there because you can see that this is basically just a Les Paul special or junior shape with a carved maple top. There's a few things on here which I think are really sweet additions. The neck, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see the pieces of the neck, but uh, it's multiple pieces. So what Hamer have done for a long time, well, they did it until their US manufacturing stopped a little while ago was it was a three piece neck for the main piece of the neck. And what you would do is cut a piece of maple into three pieces and flip the grain on the middle piece so that it, any of the wood warps. The idea is that two pieces kind of warp one way and the middle piece, which is flipped, warps the other way so you get a bit more stability. The neck on this from the early 90s is very thin, not quite Ibanez wizard thin, but it's getting there. I personally am not a massive fan of it. It kind of feels like the higher you go, the thinner it gets, which I don't love. I have a Hamer Standard from 2008, which has one of my favorite necks ever. It's a big clubby baseball bat style neck. This guitar had that neck. I'd like it a whole lot more. And the back is, you know, one piece mahogany. This particular example has this wonderful quilt maple top. And then inside the control cavity is, it's like a work of art. They use a metal plate on here and then they paint the inside of the cavity with basically a paint that kind of has shielding properties in there. So you don't need to put foil or anything else like that in there. Your control cavity is shielded. I mean, this guitar or a guitar that's now 30 years old is in immaculate condition. It's held up really well. It's not my favorite guitar. I don't quite like the vibe as much as say my 2002 Les Paul Standard, which you see on the channel all the time, but it's an impressive piece of American craftsmanship and you can kind of see that the fact that Hamer were pumping out guitars like this, it is so well made, so well put together that, you know, probably put the fear of God up Gibson a little bit in the 90s. And you also had Paul Reed Smith. If you look at the early Paul Reed Smith guitars before Paul was running the factory and before the Custom 24, they basically look like this. It's taken a Les Paul Junior or Special, which has the extra cutaway and given it a beautiful carved top on there. So a lot of a lot of kind of convergent evolution and inspiration in there. Uh, Joel Danzig, as I understand it, is still making guitars. Uh, I used to read Joel's blog and just so many great ideas and so much kind of cool stuff about guitars. I think Joel would make a great YouTuber about guitars because they've kind of been at the coal face of uh, so much cool guitar history in there. And I would highly recommend you go and read up more about Hamer guitars uh, because especially their examples from the 90s, you can still get them for reasonable prices and they're 
high-end custom shop level instruments in terms of playability and build quality. So I'll give you a few more isolated tones with this guitar. Uh, again, shout out to my buddy, John, for making that video with the Les Paul DC. It kind of inspired me to do this particular video. And, you know, Red Double Cut Club, where are all the Hamer fans at? Let me know in the comment section below What's your favorite Hamer? Do you still own them? Do you own multiple guitars? Do you have a standard from the 70s or a Sunburst like this from the late 70s or early 80s, these kind of holy grail Hamers? They're definitely uh, classic American guitars, in my opinion. Let me know in the comment section below. Have a listen to the isolated tones and I'll do some more noodling as well. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.